We really do believe that the services that we provide not only change the lives of children, but transform the lives of families. So thank you so much for your support and kindness and welcoming uh, the Place for Children with Autism. Absolutely, and on, the, on the behalf of the Mayor, the Board of Trustees, and the Village of Orland Park, we welcome you as well. Uh, we wish you many years of success. I think this is a great, unique model. And, um, you know, I really hope it pays off uh, for the kids because that's really what's most important. So thank you all. That's, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. One, two, two. two. So this is one of our, our classrooms for now. Pre-COVID, this large space would have been more of a um, group instruction okay. type of room, slash maybe a gym. Um, but because we are you know, sort of limited in how many kids can interact because they're not wearing PPE, we've kept them in what, what we call pods. Gotcha. All so right. there'll be four kids here. We're trying in to here. do the same thing for some of our events. That's exactly, <laughs> right? right? You have to do it. Um, so four kids and four therapists, all of the kids are one-to-one. Here's an example of, a, of one of our classrooms as well. This happens to be our Mickey room. All of the um, staff got to choose for their room what they wanted the theme to be, and then we bought the decals. So um, just to make it fun. Yeah, that's fun. Um, so three kids in here and three staff. Um, one thing I pointed out to the other group is you'll see walkie-talkies around the center, and that's how we communicate. As a supervisor, I communicate with my staff and vice versa. We also use them to ensure that no kids are crossing in the hallway. We have to make sure the hallway is clear to go to the bathroom, to take a walk, oh, okay. yeah. etc. Because, as I mentioned, the kids aren't wearing masks. Um, so we want to make sure they're safe. Um, all of the staff use iPads to collect data. So I left one of the iPads out here just so you could see. They wear it sort of around themselves and carry it around with the kids. Um, and that's how we're collecting data on the skills that they're acquiring. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, all of our kids are nappers, so these are their cots to sleep on. So then if, with the data that they collect, do uh -huh. you cater it towards each kid? Like yes. a learning? Oh, okay. Yes. Great. So each child's programming is highly individualized. That's one of the tenets of the type of therapy that we do. Um, and myself, as a BCBA, as a board certified behavior analyst, I would be one of the people overseeing what goes into that gotcha. programming. Okay. Understood. And then the therapists are 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 doing the intervention one to one with the child. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. So they're the technician. I am the supervisor and clinician who oversees them. Okay. Great. <laughs> Next room. So another room. This is our Blues Clues room. So again, they chose, they chose the same, but very similarly appointed room. Um, I mentioned to the other uh, group as well that you might see a mat here and there, and that's for children who might engage in like dropping to the floor, maybe some tantruming on the floor where they hit their head. We want to keep them safe and work through the challenging behavior, so that's why the mat is down. Each, each room is um, doing their own circle time in pre-COVID. A, a, small, small a small circle of maybe two <laughs> kids. Very small space style circle. But, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, the point is that we need to practice those skills. So we're still doing it, even though it's not in a large group format like it would have been pre-COVID. Um, but things like, you know, days of the week, months of the year, seasons, weather, um, singing songs and clapping along, maybe doing attendance where like, you know, Jenny, Jenny, jump up and down, right? Yeah. And we do, and then that child jumps up and down and then they sit down and it's their friend's turn. So just skills that they're gonna need for their kindergarten classroom. Right, 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 right. Again, has stellar views. It really does. <laughs> it's so nice and the kids just love it. The kids love it, the therapists love it. That's a great way to utilize the space. So yeah, like yeah, I mean, it's it's nice to spread, to spread them out too because we are within classrooms still trying to maintain social distancing between right. the kids because yeah. they're not wearing PPE. Gotcha, okay. Um, and I said this to the other group, this is exactly how you'll see the therapists all day. So we're wearing lab coats, we're wearing masks, and usually gloves as well when the kids are here. Okay. 
Hi, this is Allison O'Neill. We just finished our ribbon cutting here at our brand new Orland Park Center. We are so pleased to welcome village officials and trustees to see our brand new center. We are now enrolling children ages two through six who have an autism diagnosis. If you'd like to get more information about our programs, you could reach us at www.theplaceforchildrenwithautism.com.